Connor, thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. All right, let's get into the video. Do you guys want to know a game that I haven't covered in a very long time? This is a game that I briefly touched on back when it was first announced, but I haven't talked about it since then because they really haven't been that active, or maybe they have and I just haven't seen too much. I think I remember at one point going into their Discord, but because it wasn't actually regulated, people just started spamming at everyone, and I promptly left the Discord, and haven't really kept up with it since. So what I'm going to do is explain what 83 is, and then tell you what's been going on since then. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are unaware of this game's existence, or just forgot about it altogether. So for those of you that don't know or maybe don't remember, from the developers that brought you Killing Floor 2 and the Rising Storm series under the name Antimatter comes 83. 83 is a game that takes place in the Cold War. This is a Cold War gone hot scenario, which I really hate that stupid saying, but you know, that's what it says in the description. Much like Rising Storm 2, 83 is a combined arms, first person tactical military shooter for high player counts, 80 plus. I think the main reason why I wanted to cover this game was because there's not a whole lot of games out there that really go into Cold War. I believe the last game that I actually played that was kind of Cold War was uh, Black Ops 1. That was whew, a long time ago. The only other game that I could think that's trying to be Cold War-esque is probably After Conflict, Lost War. It's another game that I'll definitely get into more as more things come out, but right now we're going to be talking about 83 because there has been quite a bit of updates fairly recently, and I just really want to go over that. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to be looking at a couple of videos that were posted on their YouTube channel, and I'll have a link to that down in the description along with all their medias if you want to take a look at that and keep updated with their stuff but yeah the first video is relatively short one thing that i want to point out is that to me 83 is the predecessor to the rising storm series so this would actually be the first time that they're actually using the most updated unreal engine because the previous rising storm series have been i believe on ue3 and the difference is just night and day like it just looks a lot better from the previous one it looks like also in this video that they're actually showing off buildings that are just just dev textures so to me it seems like the game is still in pretty early production and likely the reason why they haven't been that active the past couple of months but from what i'm seeing it looks pretty good the video that you're watching right now is essentially the nato map it's just called western front military base it looks pretty good but it looks like it could use a little more cover because it seems like there's a lot of open areas but i'm sure as development comes along they'll add more stuff to the map in time so cool little video i feel like this is a game that's probably going to come out sometime in 2021 but i don't know i could be wrong let's move on to the next video here the next video is a little over three minutes long and it feels much more like a mini documentary the video itself is called through the gun sights and they actually reveal quite a bit of information at the beginning of the video it shows for a slight second what looks to be another studio that's working with them i wonder what they're working on then we get a glimpse at a couple of the character models from the russians and the i believe these are british i'm not sure what part of faction that is or what branch that is but i'm sure it's like somewhere on their website you just haven't seen it then they go into why they decided to go for 1983 they basically thought that it was a really cool idea and they bring up a bunch of stuff if anybody wants to watch that they could just go look at the video then they showed off new looking dead build guns along with new looking maps they show off an ak i'm assuming that's a 74 Four, I'm not sure the variant then a PKM and a SVD then they show off the British without their masks It looks like and I think those British guys have the L1A1 now The interesting thing that I find here is that they're actually working on vehicles So I think that there's actually going to be tanks and land vehicles to transport people Which that's kind of cool because I, I don't know if rising storm has ever had vehicles aside from like random carriers That you could shoot people out of and these maps actually look pretty big, too so That's kind of cool. Dang. There's like a map with like a big radio and Antenna looking thing and then there's a dam. This is gonna be some interesting looking maps. I wonder where they're based. I'm gonna wager someplace in Europe, right? Oh man, this looks really cool. They were using Google Earth to actually pinpoint the exact locations. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a really cool episode that I recommend that you guys watch. It has a lot of insight into the game, even though it's only like three minutes. Like I was actually kind of surprised that this game was going to have vehicles. I mean, I haven't really known the Rising Storm series to be heavy on vehicles. Like the first one I heard had some tanks. The second one did really have ground vehicles and mostly had air like drivable helicopters and i heard that they recently added in some tracked vehicles but aside from that like i haven't seen too much vehicle gameplay come from the rising series all that much it's mostly been uh, just infantry based so it's cool to see that so that was that video let's move on to the next one the next video is called 83 through the gun sites episode 2 okay so maybe this is like a documentary series it seems like they keep dropping these videos monthly so that's kind of cool i actually quite enjoy these so basically with this video they're going to be showing off the 
gun models. I mean, the beginning of the video is just literally a giant close up on the AK. They're showing it how it works. Then close ups of the foul, showing off that reload animation and cocking back the bolt. Yeah, just gun porn. Is what it is. Oh no, I'm gonna get demonetized because of that word. Oh shit. So I'm going to assume that the AK and the FAL are going to be the main weapons for these factions. Which I mean, I like the way that the FAL side looks so far. The AK I think is alright. I could work with it. But I think the FAL side is better, to be honest. So yeah, then they get into what guns are going to be featured into the game, at least in the beginning stages. We have a range of weapons currently in the game uh, that we're using for playtesting. We have, uh, for the NATO side, we have the L1A1. We have the L7A2. Uh, the iconic L4A4 Bren, the L42A1, and for Pact we've got the AK-74, the favourite PKM, the RPK, and the SVD sniper rifle. Now I have an issue with this next part in the video because I just don't like the way that he throws this grenade. Like the way that he throws it, it just seems like he actually like chucks it, but the grenade just goes Bleh! just hits the floor like right in front of him like two feet in front of him like does this dude have like noodle arms i just really hope that when the game actually comes out you'll be able to throw it a lot farther than that that's like my only issue with this video thus far hope they fix it before release but yeah so as i was editing this next part i was live on twitch checking my twitch by the way a lot of people were pointing out in the last couple of videos that there was a lot of inaccuracies like some of the modifications for specific guns are inaccurate according to a lot of gun nuts that were in my stream they also said that the t80 tank is too modern to be in a 1983 game i mean not exactly the tank itself but just some of the modifications that are on it make it a little too modern for it to be in an 83 game but despite that i'm definitely going to try out the game because it still looks kind of fun i mean to be honest if the gun nuts weren't in my chat i probably wouldn't have noticed that these things were inaccurate but they said that there was a lot of stuff that didn't exist in that area but that they were actually easy to fix stuff like you could keep the tank model but just get rid of some modifications because they don't exist in that era so i mean someone as casual as me when it comes to historical things Things, I didn't notice but the people who play these types of games are usually gung-ho about these types of inaccuracies So while I was on stream I decided to actually drop a comment there because they were asking in the chat So I dropped it in their discord and I got an answer of they were told in the past But they didn't seem to actually talk about that So I'm assuming that it's just something that's minor at the moment because I'm sure they have bigger fish to fry at the moment Like actually making sure that the game functions before release, but I think eventually they'll change it But who knows but anyways, let's continue with the video just thought I'd bring that up because i'm sure a lot of people are gonna notice but anyways back to the video they then move on to talk about how they get weapons into the game and what weapons they want to use for that era basically what they do is research by getting a lot of photos of the weapons that were featured in that era and see what fits then they model those weapons with the pictures that they have they say that the models aren't the final forms but as soon as they're done with them and then they send it over to their animation team to get things set up and then they send it over to their coding team to make sure that everything's implemented correctly once that's done then they polish everything up so it's an interesting process that I'm sure a lot of developers go through, but to see it here is actually pretty neat. I mean, I always enjoy seeing what goes on behind the scenes. Back to the video. They then go on to talk about how they're going to tackle shorter ranged weapons like the MP5 and the Scorpion. I'm assuming that's going to be for the next video, which hasn't come out yet as of this video. But yeah, moving on. There's apparently playtesting going on, which what the hell? I didn't know that. I have no idea if this is just like with players or it was just with their team. I don't know. They don't specify here. It's very brief, but damn, I wish I could get into one of those i want to try they're essentially testing how the weapons feel for all the players they're trying to make sure that everything is calibrated or discombobulated blah, 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 blah. and it seems as if the play testing is going pretty well for them which i could have been there but you know moving on and then after that they basically go into like an in-depth on how they actually model the weapon make it look all realistic like put all the scratches and dinks on it basically polishing it or putting on the final touches i would say pretty cool pretty cool and that's pretty much the video so overall i think that these videos give us a lot of insight into what's been going on with their game. This actually got me really excited for 83, so much so that I decided to go back and take another crack at Rising Storm 2. Initially, I was just playing to get some background footage for this video, but then a lot of subscribers showed up into my game, so I just turned it into a play session. So I'm going to be using that footage, probably uploading it either tomorrow or sometime this week, but I ended up having quite a bit of fun, and I can see that this game still has a lot of support behind it, so I think a lot of people are probably gonna get into 83, but who knows, we'll see. So tell me, what are your thoughts on 83? Is this a game that interests you? Are you a stickler for accuracy? Let me know what you think down in the comments below because this is the end of the video. If you're someone that enjoys my vids, be sure to like, share, comment, ding the bell. If you're someone that really wants to support my channel, check out my Patreon. Just send me two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye